Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. <laughs> How are you? How are we? <laughs> when I tell you it's been crazy out here in these streets, but we're doing what we're doing. Happy Easter, my darlings. Happiest of Easter's. I am living and loving because we are approaching April. April is my birthday month, and I am just so excited. I'm going to be 55, and I think this is the best I've been since my 20s. How are you, my darling sunshine? Before we get into it, as you very well know, we're having a meet and greet on the 21st of April, my darlings. And we have brands, we have color dream, we have Juvia's Please, we have we have Danisa Myricks. Danisa Myricks just added on yesterday. I'm so happy. We also have my darling healthy hair studio we also have the laser skin care clinic laser skin care you know i come out there and, and i get all of my lasers and my facials they've also jumped on board i live and love you and Fumi nation you are in for a treat we also have some doctors in the house yeah ha, ha. and we're talking about what fertility we're talking about menopause we're talking about women's health and wellness. Doctors, yes, because I went to school with them while I was doing my theater. They were also at the theater. <laughs> We've got kick. We've got dancing. We've got Q and A. All at the fabulous Novotel Hotel. Yes, in Central London. It's going to be a kick, and I cannot wait to see you. I am doing this meet and greet differently. It's really about giving back and I'm going to do this every year globally. And so we have non-profit organization for women that have come out of relationships that did not serve them. And they are coming out too. And I said, come on through mama. We have special guests of that day. And this is all at the Novotel Hotel and then some. We're cutting cake, we're dancing. We're going to have Q&A. We're going to have pictures together it's gonna go quick it's gonna go quick it's from one to five but I can see it really going quick it's going to be fabulous the tickets are flying I am not worthy every year you know I think about this or oh, will they buy and then we are over halfway done once we hit capacity we've hit capacity and there's nothing I can do I am so sorry it means I have to go bigger next year but once we hit that's it. The hall is huge and we are we are over halfway. Over halfway. <laughs> so get your tickets, my darling. I love you so very much and I cannot wait to see you on the day. Moving along, let's chat. So Diddy is hot. Diddy is all over the place. It's all about Diddy this week. All about Diddy Pool. And we had Homeland Security. Like I had told you last week when I had covered the first episode of the saga. And really the end of an era for uh, Diddy Loops. Who also likes to call himself Love Diddy, P Diddy, Mr. Love. Sean Combs. Sean Combs, Diddy, Love. The love is, seems to be one-sided, my darling Puff, because nobody is loving all of the deeds that you have carried out, allegedly, <laughs> for my lawyers in the house, in the room. And so, we have our Homeland Security. They are responding, and I told you from the gate, Homeland Security don't have time for this. They are very, 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 very busy. And anybody who has watched what went on last week, this was not just something that just fell on somebody's desk. And they said, let us jump over to Miami. Let us jump over to LA and come and run, shackle the place. They've been on him for months. As a matter of fact, our beautiful Cassie was the catalyst. It was the official jump off. And then everybody said... Hmm. Homeland Security, New York Post. How's New York Post? I used to buy you guys in the morning when I used to rush out. <laughs> oh my God. New York Post says, Sean Diddy Combs. I'm going to say parts of it. Yeah, because I keep it nice and clean here. Very family friendly. But needless to say, Homeland Security say that they got a lot of chit chat 
they got a lot of chit chat from people who have accused him of doing things to them that were not nice federal officials were acting on specific allegations when they raided two of Didi's homes on Monday and they say his victims have not been holding back during the interviews an officer with the Department of Homeland Security told the Post the case has been active for several weeks as authorities investigate a range of allegations against the 54-year-old rapper and mogul. We believe that there is a disturbing history of things that went on over there. The Miami-based officer spoke under condition of anonymity. We are responding to concrete, detailed, explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't choose his name out of a hat. We had allegations that we are following up. The public first became aware of these allegations against Didi when his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, what did I tell you, filed a federal civil suit against him in November of last year. That case was settled out of court the next day, but has been followed by three further lawsuits alleging of all kinds of things that Diddy has done and he strongly denied. He has also not been charged with any crime or wrongdoing at this stage because, because he was stopped with his entourage and his two daughters. He was questioned and that was it. He wasn't arrested. And you know what I'm thinking? Ooh, Diddy, you paid Cassie under 24 hours if this was what was going to come you didn't have to pay her <laughs> oh god <laughs> because you need liars because she actually oh this is beautiful that's what you call fabulosity you paid her and she still made sure that she hung you out to dry you know what that's the kind of damage that you can't come back from yeah 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 a hundred percent. The officer tells the post that they were looking for photos, emails, text, itineraries, hopefully names. These are specific communications that we are aware of that we will be able to access on the electronics. Jesus. The multi-agency investigation is being spearheaded by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. Monday's search was executed by Homeland Security investigators. In a statement Tuesday, Dyer described the DHS raids as a gross overuse <laughs> of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Coombs' residences and vowed Diddy would clear his name. In addition to the search, authorities are interviewing witnesses, including three women and a man. Uh, DHS operative said those who have been interviewed for the investigation have been very thorough and detailed. You see, they know when somebody is lying and I'm talking about the people that they're interviewing. And when you have consistency upon consistency upon consistency and all of them are kind of saying the same thing at around the same time, around the same scenario, they have to look at it. I am under the impression that they've separated all of them, that they have interviewed them over time, and they have not skipped a beat on what they're saying. You have to look at it. For me, like I said, I'm about the children. The children, I think half of his children are adults, but they are his children. This is the sins of the father. Combs, King, and Justin are 30 and 28 old, adults. But it's still the sins of the father. It's not their crime. And if they went along with him, look at who was in front of them to guide them. It is just, it's a hot mess. A black, a black baby. I don't want anyone to confuse me for, I mean, last night before I went to sleep, I was praying. I found myself praying for Diddy's kids. I was thinking about Justin and Christian Combs. 
and thinking about the twins who go to school with my daughter. Um, they, My daughter and his twins have been at pretty much every birthday party. And then I'm just thinking to myself, see, a lot of people will go after Diddy, beat him down for whatever he's either did or being accused of, uh, allegedly. Uh, and And then it's all about him, right? And I was thinking about the family. I was thinking about the kids. I was thinking about the stress of yesterday I went home and all of a sudden I'm in handcuffs at the house. It's 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 just trying my best to see things through the lens of the kids, not just him specifically. And then I wanted him to know, regardless of what he's being accused of and going through, as Minister Louis Farrakhan said, when a man is down, don't laugh at him. Don't make a mockery of him. Don't beat him down. Don't beat him down with your words. You don't have to agree with what somebody did. You don't have to even want to be associated with what somebody did. But everybody deserves prayer. Look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and... Diddy did it and coming up with new slogans for him. It's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think the motherfucker, he thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like, he thought that the world of hip hop would stay down and over, you know, especially without him having a case. Like, especially without him having a case, he would think, hey, fuck, they're gonna ride for me. I, I live for this hip hop shit. I lived and died this shit. The hip hop community is gonna ride for my innocence. He would assume, I'm sure. Say if he did that, then whatever he get, he get. But so far, I haven't seen no criminal charges. So out for that, I'ma just sit back and hope for the best. You know, I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that. I'ma max out in your campaign, matter of fact. I'ma generate a couple hundred thousands or a million dollars to put in your campaign you were in the seat you didn't call up the president president didn't say hey look here man nominate so now you got a you got the state judge so then now you you black man who don't own these people company you want to talk all your cash money shit, and you want to go after these people what ends up happening they start the smear campaign because they own they down with the media they got to smear you before you go into the courtroom of your peers. They go, okay, you, we can't settle with this dude. We can't we have no voice of reason. He want to act crazy. Now we're going to go after you. Now we're going to call up our same senator. Hey, man, I need you, man, go issue a search warrant, man. I need you to drag this hood. That's what we call. I want you to drag it. I want you to have all kind of allegations. So by the time he come in this courtroom, He's going to wish he ain't know we're going to take every dime you got. Because we made you. You didn't make us. I'm going to break you out to the lowest term. That's how they go, boss. So when you people that put that bread in your pocket that made you, they're going to take, they're going to take you down to the lowest terms. Sound like the movie Scarface. Bingo. That's how they do. So you go, they done smeared your name. By the time you get in the courtroom, you lost already because you're sitting up there with a jury looking at you and you're trying to sue this major corporation, this major respectable corporation, and they're going to say how many people they employ, how many people and half the people on the jury. You getting ready to sue them and they done made you, a, through the media, they done made you a crazy man. They done made you everything that you're not. I'm black all the way. But if you do wrong in our black community, we will push you out. So for my brothers out here, be quiet. Be quiet because you have children. That's where this all comes from. Everything for me comes to the children. The children, the children, the innocent, the helpless. Those children are on all costs have to be protected. Be quiet. Be quiet. Let's sit. Let's wait. Because it goes on in our black community and we shut our eye to it. You can't do that because then you are now, and that is what has been happening. You've been feeding the monster.
and what about these innocent ones? That's just not on, on any level. Needless to say, I am living and loving Homeland Security. They've gone on. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've gone on to say, you know what? While we are on that, we are going to subpoena all flight chartered. Yes, companies and companies that deal with Diddy. Fed subpoena flight charter companies used by Sean Diddy Combs amid probe. I said, no, they did not. They say, yes, we did. We are going to the bottom of this. Fed subpoena multiple companies after Miami and LA raids. The raids on Diddy's homes are just the start. The feds are issuing subpoenas to companies doing business with him, aiming to identify anyone with info pertinent to all kinds of unsavory situations. This is one of the reasons why he got rid of revolt. I'll say this to Homeland Security, check him, strip that place bare. You're right. You know, I feel some kind of way, the way it looks for the aftermath, strip it bare. Because you already know that he's been dumped a lot of stuff off. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly he's gotten rid of stuff. And I say that because he got rid of revolt. I almost feel as if he knew it was coming. He knew when Cassie said it. I mean, sister girl and all of my brothers out there, I am living and loving. I have a little tweet for you at the end of this. For my Fumi Nation brothers, because you guys have now, you used to be like 1%, half percent. You're now 10%. You're now 15%. You're now 20%. 20% Fumi Nation men. So I have to address you as such. Hello, sir. <laughs> What's up, brass? How are you doing, king? <laughs> I live, I love. I live, I love. I have to find a little slogan for us. Needless to say, needless to say, needless to say. Brothers out here and sisters out here. You cannot tell me that when Cassie came out here in these social media streets and said what she said in November, that none of us looked and said, say what now? It was so shocking. It was so shocking that I, I, I was left speechless. I was left speechless because I was like, I don't know how homegirl can come out here and this is kind of sort of a lie. It was a bit much for me. This is where it's all coming from. As we were sitting down and shocked, that was how the feds were shocked. And so we are told the subpoenas were fired off by U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, which, as we've reported, is running the investigation. I don't know how he's going to come from this. I don't know how he's going to move on from this. I pray for you, Puff. I pray for you that you find solace in alleged things that perhaps you might have done. That somehow you have to have a kind of reality check. It's all, it has imploded. And we are just watching the final mile of whatever this outcome will be. Our sources say subpoenas will be issued to commercial airlines and possibly the FAA just in case Didi opted for commercial flights instead of his private jet. As we reported, the Fed's goal here is finding out who flew on Didi's dime and where they went. Also, any potential witnesses who could support or dispute allegations. <laughs> It'll be particularly intriguing to see if people who sued Didi were on those planes. What's more, we're told the subpoenas will enable feds to gather more intel about the nature of Didi's involvement in those various businesses. My God. So you know what? On top of what he's being accused of, that little stuff that you've been getting away with is not going to come out in the wash. That is why I'm saying, Didi, you are better cooked than a turkey on Thanksgiving. There's no way you're going to escape because everything is going to come out. I don't know. I do not know. But here it is. And um, the feds have responded to say, we don't have time for this. Uh, while I've got your attention, we're subpoenaing. We, yes, yes, we've put, we've put out subpoenas for all of the flights, private jet companies, and we're looking for witnesses that will come out here and do the right thing. Case in point, we're not going nowhere. Gee, I guess so. 
All right. I'm okay. getting your letters in New York. You better say thank you to Ronke. Ronke is doing fabulous. <laughs> she said, for me, my God. They called her and they said, come and take the packages. <laughs> Hundreds of them. And I'm living and loving. And she sits down and she opens them because I said, open them for me so I can start reading one or two. And uh, this is super special to me. And I want to say thank you, my darlings. You don't even know. So this, my darling, is by Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> he says, hello, Mrs. Vold. My name is Emmanuel. And my mom, Vivian Jackson, informed me of you. She watched your show. And I just recently started watching your YouTube videos. She's 65, so she's probably watching the self-care videos. I, on the other hand, enjoy the celebrity news. I also like dieting and interview reviews on Club Shay Shay, Cat Williams, Denzel Washington, and etc. <laughs> I went to nursing school after the military. Oh, wow. And now I'm doing travel nursing. I wanted to start a business a year ago, and I combined two things I like. Video games and coffee. So I came up with the name Controller Ula. <laughs> Controller with milk. I was particular about the supplies and now sell gourmet coffee and loose leaf tea online, which is video game themed. The only social media I've used was Facebook and I've never considered myself an entrepreneur. You are now my darling brother, Emmanuel. Last year has been a learning process in business, marketing, etc. If you don't mind, I sent you some coffee and tea. I'm wanting to learn some tips from you in marketing online. Any help would be appreciated. And sincerely, Emmanuel Lewis, Controller Ola at gmail.com. And this is his logo right here. I will do everything in my power to help you, my darling Emmanuel Brother Lewis. I love you. You're such a sweetheart. I loved this. Ronke read it to me. And we just thought you're amazing. Say hello to your mama. She's only 65. So she's only 10 years older than me. So, so we're very close in age. So you're like my son. Let me give you the maximum respect. Because uh, military, you served. And so you kept all of us home safe here. And in so doing, we have to show our appreciation. I'm going to put everything up here. And I'm going to put up the coffees. I don't drink coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I love coffee ice cream. And I also love tea. Fumi Nation brothers and sisters, let's support Brother Emmanuel Lewis. For those of you that want me to recite your letters and promote your businesses, that is what this platform is about. All I ask is for you to follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, follow me on YouTube, and you buy my t-shirts. They're not out yet, but you buy a t-shirt so that I can see you. Business, business, business. You guys deserve to have your businesses, and that's what it is. You have a platform, and Emmanuel, might I add, this is your platform. Fumi Nation is your platform. Fumi Nation men, Fumi Nation boys, Fumi Nation children. We want to build playgrounds. We want to build communities. We want to have coffees and teas in the morning. I want to holler at you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I'm so, so proud of you. And you keep on with your letters. Keep on with your emails. You send me emails all the time. I know I'm overloaded, but I love you guys so much. Keep on sending. Just know that you have to follow all of my social media platforms. And I'm on Facebook too. I think I'll put a link so you see where I'm at. Instagram, TikTok, because I put all of the mini videos of these episodes there as well. Emmanuel, God bless you. Emmanuel Lewis. Let's not forget the name. Controller Ola. Very, very good. And I like it. I like the brand. I like the coffee. And I like video games. Adrian loves video games. <laughs> All of my love for me nation. And I'll see you what? I'll see you sooner than later. <laughs> Happy Easter. <Mwah. laughs> Bye, ma. <laughs>